we're going to move to our fifth presentation. Again, I want to thank the members of the media for being with us today and uh, and covering our nine Frontier Conference football programs. Uh, our next presenter will be Troy Purcell, head coach at Carroll College. Uh, he's entering year six uh, with the Fighting Saints, uh, carries an overall record of 30 and 15. And uh, as I mentioned in my early remarks, uh, very commendable. Uh, the, the football program at Carroll led the way with 54 academic all-conference recipients and uh we're that's a that's a that's to be that's to be commended so i'm going to turn the time over to uh, to coach purcell and look forward to hearing from him and student athlete that is with him today go ahead troy uh, first of all, I'd just like to introduce Hunter Peck. Uh, we can have some questions later. Uh, outstanding young man, uh, four-year uh, starter, uh, letter winner. Uh, expect great things out of him. Going to be a doctor later on in life. Uh, again, with the academic, uh, uh, the uh, what our guys have done has been unbelievable. Uh, this last spring, we're at a 3.4 GPA average, and uh, just unbelievable uh, how dedicated our students athletes are here at Carroll College. Uh, dealing with our coaching staff, uh, offensive uh, um, uh, coordinator, uh, Alex Vanish, who will be back this next year coming up. This is going on his sixth season. Uh, Coach Randy Bandalo is our defense coordinator going on his uh, sixth season also. So that uh, stability in a staff has been uh, uh, a credit to, uh, you know, the program here and the success that we've had. Uh, Michael Bronx, a new guy in, uh, working with our D-line and special teams. And then, uh, but he was here last year. Uh, coach Molliner, uh, quarterback uh, coach, uh, from the University uh, of Idaho came in. He was, uh, so this would be his second year. Uh, Jim Hogan, a legend here in Montana, uh, was here for the, you know, six national championships and countless uh, conference championships. He's helping out on the offensive line. Uh, new guys to the mix is uh, Coach Luke Hyde. Uh, Luke Hyde was one of my tight ends in Idaho when I was there. Uh, he ended up uh, going to Wazoo, uh, was coaching O-line there, and uh, he ended up making his way over here. But he's our strength coach, O-line coach. Uh, Taylor, Taylor Fendall uh, is going to work with our tight ends this year. He's a new guy that just came in from, uh, uh, from, the, from the West Coast. Um, and so those are the guys right now. We've got a couple of guys still, uh, you know, waiting to get hired. Uh, we got to see uh, one's from Pennsylvania. So we got to see how, how quickly he can get over here. But, uh, you know, finding quality guys, it takes a while sometimes. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we got a great staff, excited about the staff. They've been here and, uh, you know, just the dedication that they have uh, towards Carroll and Carroll College football uh, is, is uh, um, unbelievable. A great group of people. Uh, key returning players, you know, Hunter Pecks, the guy sitting next to me. I still think our strength of our uh, whole uh Carroll College football program has it's been the D-line, and I think it will continue to be uh, 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 the strength of having some good quality young men in there. we got Hunter Peck as one of them. Uh, Garrett Warden, if you guys remember him, number nine uh, last year. He'll be back uh, this year. Uh, Forrest Warrow, uh, uh, Mason Harwood, um, D, Denavion Ali. Um, and then we have a newcomer in there with uh, Rocky Shields. He came in in the, in the winter. Uh, he was from Washington. Zoo over there, plays D line, plays nose guard. Uh, so uh, nice transfer, mid year transfer that came in. So those guys are looking pretty good on the D line, and again, very you know excited to be able to see them play and, and a lot of experience there. Uh, at the rock position, we got Ben Melhoff who'll be back at that position with a newcomer coming up and Henry Gross, uh, an old Capitol High Bruin from across the way here. Tough kid, you know, real strong, athletic, tough individual. Um, and then we have. Uh, uh, kind of your your stud linebacker and Cam Pruitt um, and Gunnar Julio. They'll be sharing responsibilities there. Uh, two tough individuals also. Probably Julio is a little tougher than Cam, but Cam always finds a way to find gold. Uh, and uh, But Julio is a four-time uh, straight uh, champion wrestler uh, in Idaho. So he's, he's a tough, tough individual. Uh, uh, linebackers, you got Jake Swetland from Hellgate, uh, Gage Norslian from uh, uh, Lewiston, 
and then uh, and then Jet Boyce and, and then Tucker Zano. So we got four guys there with uh, not a lot of experience, but uh, tough athletic kids that can really run well. Uh, some newcomers coming into that group is Eli Avey. Uh, he's going to play linebacker. He came from us uh, from uh, Montana State. And then uh, Brett Tomasini from uh uh, came to us from uh, uh, Boise, Idaho. So uh, two inside backers, too, that are, I'm sure are going to be seeing some time there. Uh, very, very athletic. The guys can run really well. Uh, cornerback position, we have Dax Graham and Mason Green. Dax Graham, uh, I, I, this is, uh, and it's Max Graham and uh, Elijah Larson. So uh, behind them is Mason Green and, and Johnny Amezio. So uh, we're looking at them. They, they were young last year, coming in, excited to see them play, excited to see their growth, uh, growth as players and uh, maturity. And so, uh, it's good, again, be excited to see them, them play. Uh, safety position, we've got graduated there. So right now it's kind of Bodie Smith and uh, uh, Orlandi, Brandon Orlandi. Uh, two outstanding young men, very athletic individuals. Uh, Bodie is also on the track team, very, very fast. Uh, you know, from Whitefish, Montana. <clears throat> then we have uh, Caden Hansen. The kids call him Cricket. Uh, he's a big old, you know, uh, played corner in high school, but he comes down uh, heel real well. I really like what he's doing at safety. Uh, and then you got Devon Brewer also. Uh, you know, is going to have some time there also. And then Anthony Cooper. Uh, it's another person that gets to get some time there. So we just got to see how this uh, gels out you know, as we're going towards, uh, you know, uh, the fall camp and into the season. Um, uh, Jamari Blake, um, he's an unbelievable corner out of Houston, Texas. And then we had Jake uh, uh, Nemechek from uh, uh, Oregon coming in as corner also. Those have come uh, two freshmen that are coming in. Then again, with a whole bunch of other freshmen that have those opportunities to, you know, make some, some things happen. On the offensive side, you have Jack Perka. He's a four-time uh, starter. Uh, earned the job after the third game his freshman year. Uh, worked his way up. He was in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Uh, greatest uh, quote, or quarterback that I've been around on his timing aspect of the ball, of getting it out. Uh, tremendous leader. Uh, just an overall great kid there. We've got Quinn Stamps. Uh, that'll be his backup along with uh, uh, Hogan Carmichael. Hogan Carmichael is a uh, transfer out of Idaho. So those three guys are going to be, you know, battling pretty hard. Uh, Connor Willis uh, has got an out foot right now. So he's a freshman that's coming in. So he's probably not going to be in the mix right away. Uh, but uh, he's an outstanding young man also. Uh, running back position, you got Max Lehman coming back. He was in the spring, ended up earning that job with Cormac Ben. Uh, we're kind of our two older guys there uh, that were in the program and really excelled along with AJ LaFerge and Jake Jeske. Those guys kind of had really good springs coming out. And we do have some transfer kids that came in and Azure Troy came from the University of, uh, of Montana, played a little bit of running back for the Bozeman Hawks. Um, and then uh, he's going to be back. So he's back. He's big back. And then we got uh, Xavier Ford. I uh, came down from uh, transferred from uh, uh, anyway. He was from, originally from Southern California down there. Uh, big 220 pound guy that can run well. And then uh, Peter uh, Minert uh, from uh, uh, Boise area out of Bishop Kelly. He was a Gatorade player of the year down there at running back. And so we're deep in that room, you know, before we were a little bit light and now we're, we're deep as deep. So uh, it's exciting, but you know, it's fun to see him run around uh, during the summer, but we actually get a place in football now, and put some, uh, put some pads on, and see how well some of these transfers and how well some of these other kids and like freshmen coming in are going to excel. So it, it'll be fun to, to make that happen. Receiving core, you know, we have uh, Chris Colton coming back. He was our big explosive guy last year. Uh, you know, again, a tremendous back, unbelievable speed. Uh, Lincoln Holmes uh, will also be uh, kind of penciled in at that slot receiver. Probably the most complete receiver we have. He's a, he's a uh, red shirt, uh, a sophomore and uh, just an out, outstanding uh, young player. And then uh, Gavin Vandenacre, he's from Townsend, Montana. Uh, those three guys kind of stood out. Uh, we also got Colin Stoddard, who was a slot receiver. 
Hunter Sullivan, uh, you got uh, Garrett Stone, you got Sam Murphy, you got Quinn Belcher, you got a few guys out there uh, that are going to really fit this whole group of receiving core together. Uh, probably the most athletic group that we've ever had here uh, since I've been here, so it's exciting to see. Uh, tight end-wise, you got Carson Ochoa. Uh, he was our Frontier Conference uh, uh he earned Frontier Conference recognition, uh, outstanding uh, tight end. Um, and then uh, you got Brian Rickman along with him. Um, so both those guys return with a lot of time. Um, so that's exciting to see. Left tackle, you got Andrew Devine, a big 6'9 kid from Alaska. He's about 300 and 300 pounds right now, looking really good. Had a great spring at uh, the left tackle, left guard, White Sanford from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Probably the most athletic lineman we have. He's very, very talented. Uh, he can play either side of the ball, but he is very, very talented. Uh, Jaden Lamb will be a senior this year. He'll be one of the veteran guys from Townsend, Montana. He's played a lot of games. Ben Larson will be new. He's a big 6'7". 275 pound kid out of Nevada. So he'll have, he's uh, very talented, but again, not a lot of game experience. Uh, Tim Sellers at the right tackle position, 6'4, about 285, uh, has a lot of experience. You know, he's uh, uh, he's been in, been in the games and quite a few games. So feel good about it. We got some young guys, we got a few old guys. Uh, then we have a kid named Sam Keene coming in. Uh, I feel good about Sam uh, also as a person that might be able to come in and get, contribute right away. Uh, special teams wise, um, we got uh, Spencer Berger from Billings West High School. Uh, a few years ago, he made enough field goals to be the national player of the year. Uh, but I really love his consistency. Uh, Nick Klaus will be another guy fighting in that position. And then our so part of our punter, uh, uh, Spencer Berger was also our punter, but we got a kid named Jack Thompson. Uh, he's a transfer kid that just came in this summer. Uh, so it'll be exciting to be able to see him play uh, live reps also. Uh, Antonio Bastard Cheeto will be our long snapper and Gunnar Gleesman is a short snapper, you know, at this time. Uh, Colin Stoddard and Quinn Belcher will be our kind of returners at this time. And uh, we just got to see how the other guys gel and, and uh, when fall camp comes around and, and uh, make some things happen. So, but excited about the guys coming back, excited about the transfer kids we came in, uh, real high quality guys, uh, just excited about that. Um, non-conference matchups this year coming up. Uh, again, that's in Montana Tech. It's going to be, you know, that fist fight again. You know, we ended it last year with that with uh, Montana Tech, and we'll start it up again this year with Montana Tech. So uh, be excited to be on this field. You know, new turf, new lights, exciting times here at Carroll College. And uh, Nelson Stadium was pretty pretty cool as it was. And you put turf and lights on it now, and it's, uh, you know, I don't know if it's a top – three in the nation, but it is pretty special. I'd like to thank, you know, Dr. Sec and, and uh, Charter the Gross, our athletic director, and and uh, for all their support uh, in that project. And um, uh, Tom Downey and, and John Michelotti were kind of the heads of that thing too a little bit. And so uh, just exciting to see it come to light and have the shiny, sparkly stuff. We're actually, you know, where everybody else is now on playing surface and be able to play fast and consistent. Um, get back into the season, Frontier Conference, it's tough play. It's uh, We started off well last year, you know, won some games early, but we didn't finish where we needed to be. And uh, so that's a big goal, just to stay the course, uh, never too high, never too low, stay even, just keep stacking practices and continue to get better, you know, one practice at a time, one rep at a time. I know that's coach talk a little bit, but man, there's a lot of truth to it. Um, so anyway, so it's going to be, a, it's going to be a battle all the way through. So it will probably won't decide until, you know, until the last game of the year on, on where everybody stands. Um, so, um, but other than that, uh, you know, the schedule is a schedule and, and uh, uh, we're fortunate this year. We have six out of 10 games at home, which I've never been a part of before. And we have uh, five out of six games, uh, you know, at home, uh, you know, to start the season. So uh, we need to we need to show well and show well fast. So but I'm proud of our guys, proud of our coaches. And uh, uh, you guys have any questions? Johnny, go ahead. Johnny Walker, MTN Sports. Uh, Coach, I just wanted to ask about expectations because Carroll is such a storied program. Obviously, last year doesn't end the way you would have wanted it to. Pick fifth in the preseason poll this year. But this is a program used to competing for championships. So 
What are the expectations in that regard inside the building? You know, the, the expectation is always there. You know, we don't look on last year. I always tell the guys, this is your team. So don't dwell on what we did, or not you, but just don't, we don't talk about what we did last year because that's, again, a whole other team and their legacy and how they left it is how they left it. It was a successful season, seven and three. Um, but again, it wasn't a championship type season. Um, we don't really talk about champions. When I, back in my early years, uh, I'd always break the huddle out as being a national champ or a conference champ or, or a state champ. And half the guys went to the lake and half the guys went to the weight room and nobody believed in what we were saying. And, uh, and if we're not taking care of today, uh, because the, the kids said, well, I'm going to lift tomorrow, coach, or I'm gonna, I lifted yesterday. Well, we're not getting better. What'd you do today to get better? And as long as you're getting better each day, those champions or those wins will come. And once your wins come, then your championships will get, get there and you'll win national championships and conference championships. And when you're winning national championships, conference championships, then you get your all American players because they play on national championship teams. But if you're not taking care of today, you're, you're because everybody wants to win a national championship. Everybody wins it's a conference championship. You know, it just is what it is. And again, there is some pressure here at Carroll College because they've done it a few times. I think it's 46, 45 conference championships now, with six national championships, most winningest program in any high school history. Yeah, there's there's a little bit of a little bit of weight. You know, Coach Petrino was here for 27 years. Coach Van Deese was here for 20 years. And so uh, we're just trying to make our our mark. Uh, as a staff and as players uh, and, and continue this uh, tradition of excellence here at Carroll College. And um, again, it's just exciting to be a part of such a great, uh, uh, you know, tradition. Thank you, Coach. And then quick follow-up for Hunter. What has been the messaging from Coach in, during the summer leading up to the season at workouts in that regard in terms of expectations? Um, you know, I think the expectation here at Carroll is always to win. I think coach has been clear this summer and throughout the off season, uh, just having the expectation of not just showing up when you need to and getting that extra work in. Um, I think we, the team has totally fulfilled that expectation. And I think this summer and this off season, uh, coach has made that clear, um, show up, get that extra work in, you know, and it's the little things, the extra things that are going to propel us to success. So. All right, Jack Marshall. Uh, yeah, I just had another question for Hunter here. Hunter, obviously we talk about the tradition of Carroll College and that includes good defenses and also good linebackers like you. Um, last year, really talented group. Uh, what do you think, I guess, the the mentality of this year's defensive group? What do you think it's going to be known for this year on the defensive end? Um, I think like every other year, it's uh, playing fast, you know, um, creating takeaways. Um, and I think leading, leading this team and um, – you know, contributing how we have in the past years. Um, I think the mentality this year is is the same as it has it been. Like you, you know, running around, playing fast. Um, you know, playing the Carroll Carroll defense, Rackham defense. So, Daniel Shepard. Yeah, I just had a question for Hunter. Um, I think I was talking to your mom before the spring game a couple months ago. She mentioned that. They that your parents were moving to Montana, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, I was just kind of curious what Montana. I know you're a Colorado guy. What Montana has kind of come to mean to you, and just knowing your family is going to be a little bit closer to you now. Yeah, so I hope my parents move in. Actually, not too long ago, it's been great. Um, Montana has became became my home in these past four years. You know, my dad, he's a Montana guy, born and raised in Big Fork, Montana. So uh, Montana really has become I wouldn't even say my second home. I would say my first home and my family's first home, you know, and uh, Carroll College has has a big part in that. And, you know, um, yeah, Montana means a lot to my family and to this team. So they moved to Helena. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. OK. And then I guess just a follow up for, for Coach Purcell, if I could. Um, simple question, I guess, is how do you guys take a step offensively this year? Take a step off of what? Uh, take a step offensively this year. 
Patrick still in there. Take a step offensively this year. Oh, uh, it's playmakers, man. We need some playmakers. You know, I think, like I said, uh, you know, with the guys we have, I, I really believe uh, that we're going to have some explosive plays. We just have not uh, been as explosive as we needed to be uh, on the offensive side. You know, I don't know, uh, turnovers and this and that. We were efficient, but we weren't explosive. And explosive plays create, you know, points. And at the end of the game, we got to score more points. We got to get at least one uh, score per quarter. Uh, you know, with the way our defense have been playing, little bend but not break. Sometimes they're out there for a little bit, but very, very good at keeping them out of that, uh, out of the end zone. And then when we have opportunities, we've got to take advantage of them. And one touchdown per quarter per game, you get to 28, you kind of feel how the game goes, and then you can kind of control it, you know, at that time, uh, if you need to in the fourth quarter by running more, throwing more, or wherever you're at. So, but again, at the end of the day, if we went two to zero, if we went 101 to 100, you know what I mean? We'd find a way to get one more point in, in our opposition and, and find a way to win. Thank you. DJ Bauer, go ahead. Hey guys, uh, DJ Bauer with SWX. Uh, obviously, you know, exciting time for the Frontier Conference in Southwest Montana with uh, Carroll Tech Western all getting big stadium renovations. Um, I'll ask each of the three of you, you guys are up first. I, either of you guys can answer this question for me. Uh, make your case for me. What, what makes the renovations at, uh, at Nelson Stadium the best? What renovations were the best? How is it? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, personally, I would say our field, just the colors and how they pop. It's it's super beautiful. The outside of the stadium, you know, they just laid a bunch of sod down. It looks really pretty. And the lights. And I think just being in Helena, Helena, Montana, it's got to be one of the best places to play in the world. So, Yeah, the stadium was, like I said, top three anyway. You put turf and lights there now. I uh, have an opportunity to not have light towers in the morning at 5 o'clock. You know, when they don't start, and I got to jump them with my truck, and we're trying to get to. Oh my gosh, it's a, it, it's a an unbelievable opportunity. I just said it again today uh, to Colin uh, Burke here, and uh, just he's our SID, does a great job, and uh, we were out there just going unbelievable how this looks to fill the turf. The venue now set at Nelson Stadium uh, is just you know top rate. All right, Coach. We uh, we very much appreciate you and Hunter being with us today, and wish the uh, the Saints the very best in their upcoming season. Appreciate uh, all the uh, the questions from the members of the media. We're going to let you all go, and we're going to uh, transition to our next presentation. Thank you, Troy. Thanks, Scott.